Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com. In this video, we're going to compare the Nexus 4 with the iPhone 5. Let's get to it. Okay, let's get started. We're going to talk about hardware, then we're going to do some speed tests, talk about the camera, really do a full suite of comparisons here. First, let's start off with the hardware. These devices couldn't look any more different. The iPhone 5 has a, a smaller screen than the Nexus 4 at 4 inches and 1166 by 640 resolution, making for a PPI, a pixel density of 324 pixels. Uh, the Nexus 4, on the other hand, has a higher resolution display, 1280 down by 768 across at 4.7 inches is making for a PPI of 320. So they're about four PPI away from one another. You can't see pixels on either screen. Once you get above that 300 threshold, you just can't see pixels and both have a very high quality display. Something to note though is that the iPhone 5 cannot display true HD content because the resolution is just not high enough. So if you're on YouTube or if you're watching an HD movie, it's downscaling it uh, to fit on the 1166 by 640 display, whereas natively on the Nexus 4 you can play 720p video, although as we're going to see shortly, you do get small black bars because the resolution is a little bit greater uh, than 1280 by 720 unlike the Nexus, the Galaxy Nexus and the Samsung Galaxy S3 and so forth. So let's take a look at the other hardware. Two different design philosophies here. We've got glass and glass on the Nexus 4, which interestingly is f is taken from the previous uh, iPhone, the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 4, which had glass on the front and the back. It's beautiful, it's elegant, and it's especially striking on the Nexus 4 because look at these little circles. There is a circle placed along every millimeter or so, and some of them sort of turn on when you when you flip it. So where you think there are no little circles and you turn it into the light, they kind of glisten. It's just a beautiful, beautiful effect. The downside with glass, as we learned from the iPhone 4 and 4S, uh, having glass on both sides means is if you drop your phone, you're more likely to crack the back because now you have glass on the front and the back. And also glass can be, as you can see here, a fingerprint magnet. So you might want to get a case for your Nexus 4. Surrounding the Nexus 4, we've got soft touch plastic here, which gives it a nice in-hand feel. It is thicker though than the iPhone 5 and heavier. So in terms of weight, we're talking about 139 grams on the Nexus 4, 112 grams on the iPhone 5. Some people think that the iPhone 5 feels a little bit dainty. Some people like a little bit more meat to their phone, but there's no doubt about it that the iPhone 5 is the thinnest smartphone out there right now. It's also one of the most beautiful. We've got this really nice beveled edge. We've got metal on the back. These tiny pieces of glass on the top and the bottom, but you really don't have to worry about cracking them because if you drop your phone, it's probably gonna nick an edge here. And unfortunately, this metal is very soft as we found out. In fact, you could probably see some nicks in here already. I haven't used this phone for that long. Both of these phones really need a case. You know, the nicer the phone design is, the, the better the materials, the more you're gonna wanna use a case uh, because once you get a crack or a scratch, it's just, it's pretty upsetting. So very thin design here on the iPhone 5 with the metal and the glass and a striking design here on the Nexus 4 with this really awesome uh, effect here on the back. Now let's talk about specifications. The iPhone 5 is the Apple A6 dual-core chip running at about 1 to 1.2 gigahertz. Uh, it's got a gigabyte of RAM and it comes in storage sizes of 16, 32, and 64. No storage, obviously you never get expandable storage on an iPhone. Uh, here on the Nexus 4 we get the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro quad-core CPU. Uh, this CPU has shown to be the fastest CPU in all of our tests and we're going to see some day-to-day -day performance tests and see if it's true when we browse the web, when we open apps and so forth. We also get two gigabytes of RAM, so double the amount of RAM, and we get storage options of eight and 16 gigabytes, so less than the iPhone 5, and there is no storage available on this guy, unfortunately. Uh, that seems to be the trend going forward is that we're not gonna have storage options because it makes it easier to manufacture, but unfortunately, then you get smaller capacities. So the first thing we're going to do is boot these two up, see which one starts up first. So we've got a power button on the top, power button on the side, Samsung style, even though this is an LG phone. One, two, three, press, press, and felt a vibration on both. Google, Apple, all right, let's see what happens, see which gets to the lock screen first. Got the Nexus logo, the Apple logo.
Okay, the Nexus 4 One. The iPhone 5 is... Oh, there, there it comes. Okay, so the Nexus 4 was faster there. Now I want to compare screen quality. In order to do this, we're going to max screen brightness out at 100% on both. So let's go into uh, brightness over here, display over here, and then brightness. And hopefully this doesn't blow out the camera, because it's going to be a lot of brightness. Okay, so now both on 100% screen brightness, you obviously can see that there's a lot more screen area here on the Nexus 4, but also you can note that it's not that much taller in terms of the actual usable screen space. It's about the same as on the iPhone 5 because we've got these dedicated Android buttons here. So let's go into the web browser real quick and bring up a picture on both and see if we can tell a difference in terms of screen quality before we run into zero before both of these devices go to 0% battery because they're on maximum screen brightness. So we're gonna go into the web. Okay, now right off the bat, here we are on Google and we have a white page. And what you can see is that the white on the iPhone 5 is definitely wider. You get a much warmer color temperature here on the Nexus 4. So let's go over to images. And this is not really a speed test. We're gonna do a speed test soon. This is just to see the difference in screen quality. So now we're going to search for beach. Okay, we have a variety of beach scenes here. We're looking for color naturalness, if that's a word. We, we want to see which of these devices has more true-to-life colors. And we're going to load up both of these. We're starting at kind of a zoomed out view. We can move that over. And so what we see is that warmer color temperature really translates when you're looking over at pictures here on the Nexus 4. You can see the sky is warmer, the sunset is a little bit more orange, although you could say equally that the iPhone 5 is a little too cool. Maybe it's a little bit too blue. Uh, but both look quite good if you're just looking at photos here. And let's go back and let's click on this. Let's check out the color of the water. So here on this water scene, it looks like the iPhone 5 is doing a little bit of a better job maybe uh, in terms of making the blue look more blue. Over here, it looks a little bit green because when you add a, a, an orangey color to the mix with a warmer screen, things kind of look less blue. Now, another consideration when comparing these two screens is that the Nexus 4 is higher resolution. So when you're browsing the web, does that translate into seeing more on the screen at one time? And yes, it does. Here we are on the Pocket Now mobile site. Let's get the uh, address bar out of the way on both. It's not going to hide there. And we can see more, of con more content here on the Nexus 4. So here it's cut off uh, on this Nokia story, but you can see the entire Nokia story on the Nexus 4. So obviously higher resolution means you can see more on the screen at one time, and that especially holds true here uh, when you're comparing the iPhone 5 with the Nexus 4. Okay, next up, let's see how third-party apps launch. We're going to see which open apps faster. Start with Facebook. One, two, three, go. And updating Nexus 4 was slightly faster. The iPhone 5 was just uh, clearing up there. Let's open the camera. Very important test because you want to be there for that special moment. One, two, three, boom. Okay, that was inconclusive. That was exactly equal. Let's try it again. That was exactly equal. Okay, let's try Twitter. One, two, three, Twitter. Okay, faster on the Nexus 4. Let's try Bad Piggies. One, two, three, Bad Piggies. Faster right off the bat for the iPhone 5. And... Yep, definitely faster on the iPhone 5 there. And let's check out Spotify. One, two, three, Spotify. Okay, uh, completely equal there. No, no difference, they both opened at the exact same time. So pretty much a tie in terms of launching third party and first party apps. Let's go into the browser and see which loads page is faster. That's extremely important. So we're going to go right into Safari here. Well, we've already got Pocket now open here. So let's start there. We'll go to the bottom of the page and this will allow you to zoom in, but this has zoom locked. We're gonna go to the desktop version, try to do it at the exact same time. One, two, three, go. So lots of images here, a ton of stuff to load. We're over Wi-Fi on both. iPhone 5 finished first, or did it? Yes, it did finish first. And the Nexus 4 came in after that. 
Scrolling down the page on the iPhone 5, pretty clear, no white spaces. Let's see, we get on the Nexus 4. Again, no white spaces. Let's pinch to zoom and see which clears up text faster. One, two, three, release. That was exactly equal. Okay, we're seeing that a lot. These are very, very competitive devices, both top of their game. Uh, so we're gonna click on this story, see which gets there first as they slide around on the table. And we're watching the progress bar, progress bar, iPhone 5 finish first, Nexus 4 coming in a few seconds later, but of course the page is usable. And let's check out how long it takes to load this YouTube video. Okay, let's see. Completely equal. Let's try to go full screen on these guys here. And so you can kind of see what I meant about the bars on the Nexus 4. Uh, so on the Nexus 4 here, you are getting some black bars here on the top and the bottom. They're very difficult to see, but that's what happens because the resolution's higher than than 720p HD. On the iPhone 5, we're downscaling here uh, from high definition, and you really can't tell. I mean, they both look about the same. In fact, the actual viewing area of the video on both is about the same because of the UI elements on the Nexus 4. We're going to go into YouTube shortly and, and compare rendering times for HD video. But let's go back and do a little bit more on the web. Let's go to The Verge. All right, let's go one, two, three, go. Okay, Nexus 4 got there first. It was ready and waiting. Let's go down to the full site here. One, two, three, go. And they're off. And the iPhone 5 won there. Let's uh, double tap to zoom in this time instead of pinching to zoom. Tap, tap. Completely equal, no difference. Let's zoom in a lot more and release. They cleared up at the exact same time. And I gotta say that text on both of these looks really, really good. I mean, when you get above the 300 PPI threshold, text is just razor sharp. You cannot see pixels on the Nexus 4 or on the iPhone 5. So in terms of web browsing performance, it looks like the iPhone 5 is a little bit faster. And, and to be honest, we kind of think that's because of the Chrome browser. The Chrome browser has a lot of cool features on Android, but it's not the fastest browser. And Google has taken it out of beta as if it's done, but we really think that Chrome is not done, that there are still further performance enhancements to be made to this browser, and that we kind of wish that Google had included the stock Android browser with the Nexus 4. So let's go into the YouTube app and check out video. Uh, so of course here on the uh, iPhone 5, the YouTube app hasn't been updated for the full iPhone 5 screen, which is disappointing, but we'll, we'll work with it. So let's click on YouTube, one, two, three, go. Loaded faster on the iPhone 5. Go into the comedy category. Oh, that's fascinating. Um, and let's pick, again, this is sliding around on the table a little bit. Let's pick uh, this video here. So we're gonna click on see which loads it faster. Uh, played a little bit faster there on the iPhone 5. But here's really where the, the Nexus 4 screen really shines because we're watching native 720p video. It's taking up the full frame. The colors look great, the saturation is fantastic, and it just makes for a much better viewing experience than this. Of course, when we get the update for the iPhone 5 YouTube app, it'll fill the entire frame, but again, we're gonna be downsampling from full HD. And let's check out voice assistance here. Uh, so we're gonna do Siri and Google Voice. When is Thanksgiving this year? Thanksgiving exactly Thursday, at the same November 22nd, time. 2012. Amazing. When does Christmas take place next year? Christmas is on Wednesday, Wednesday December 25th, Exactly the same time. Now what about photo quality? A lot of people complained about the Galaxy Nexus's 5 megapixel camera, how it really didn't take great shots. And so let's compare some pictures that we took with the iPhone 5 and then with the Nexus 4 kind of side by side. Uh, and, and we have to say, and you can be the judge for yourself, that the iPhone 5 it does take better photos. Uh, it's better in low light. It's also better close up. It has an easier time focusing. Uh, so we definitely give the points there to the iPhone 5 just in terms of sheer photo quality.
Now finishing up here, let's talk about pricing and availability. That's very important. The iPhone 5 is available on three carriers with LTE. The prices range from $199 to $299 to $399, depending on whether you want 1632 or 64 gigabytes of storage. The Nexus 4, if you can get it, it's a uh, still up for pre-order or it's sold out really is available for 299 bucks or 349 dollars off contract unlocked which means you can use it on any gsm carrier you don't have to sign a two-year contract you only get hspa plus data speeds which are about half or a third the speed that you get over lte and your storage configurations are either eight gigabyte or 16 gigabytes. Uh, the iPhone 5 off contract is extremely expensive. Uh, 600 plus another fee to unlock the phone. So you're at 700 bucks or so for a new iPhone 5 that is unlocked that you want to use on any carrier. And of course you won't get LTE speeds with an unlocked iPhone 5 because AT&T prepaid for example doesn't let you do LTE yet. So if you want an unlocked phone for the cheapest amount of money, uh, really the, the Nexus 4 is a no-brainer, but if you want a two-year contract on a carrier, you want to get the LTE speeds and, and lock in the iPhone 5 is, is a clear choice there. So the iPhone 5 and the Nexus 4 are both best-in-class devices. They both have really good screens, they have fantastic day-to-day -day performance, and solid battery life. It's just a matter of whether you want to buy into Android or iOS. It also mat matters on whether you want to sign a two-year contract or maybe do prepaid. The choice is really up to you, and hopefully this video helped you decide between the two. They're both really, really great, capable phones. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and watch out for more comparisons with the Nexus 4 coming up soon. That's it for now.